Welcome back to the new and improved car pacing countryside of episode 18 with me, Mr. Silly P. I'm back. I'm not going to lie, it's been an eventful week. <laughs> I can't believe it's been an entire week. Absolutely crazy. I have put some videos up. There's been some uh, map tours and mods reviews and then there's been all the footage from FarmCon and I got to meet Caleb Cooper from Clarkson's Farm. That was phenomenal. I've, had, I've got to hang out with some amazing people. I've got to meet some people that I knew, but I've never met in person. One of those being Kerminator, um, from the US office, working for Giants. That man is an absolute legend. Uh, just such a fantastic man, so passionate about Farming Simulator, passionate about the Farming Simulator community, passionate about helping the community, um, about helping content creators, but just the guys amazing. He worked with a guy called Nicholas in the US, both of them amazing guys. Can't give him a massive shout out enough. I know I've mentioned it before, and it's that I'm still, I think it's that weird thing that day to day you kind of do, and in, in your, um, you, you're doing what you do. I still view myself as I'm a bloke making videos at home, I do my thing. And, you know, and then it's that thing of, I know I have idols, I have people I look up to, I have role models, I have people that I either have met or I would love to meet, and then there's friends and people that I've made, I've said this along the way, of doing this, and I've been lucky enough to meet some, Virtual Farmer being one of them, what a fantastic man. Um, Friedrich Liefling from Creative Mesh, I consider him to be a friend, he's an amazing, amazing man. Um, so anyway, DJ Goham, Farmer Cop, flew over from the US. Um, when I met them for the first time, they did to me what I do because they look at me as their role model. They both said, we do Farming Simulator because of you. It was your channel, what you did that inspired us to do our channels and both of them said we would not be doing what we're doing had it not been for you. And it's, it's that weird. And it was such an honor and a privilege to spend time with them. And Argsy, Argsy Gaming, all the way from New Zealand, um, farm sim guy. I know I've mentioned them on, on the other videos, on the kind of vlog vlog videos, but just amazing people. I, and, and all of that, everything that's happened, like I say it feels surreal, it feels weird, it's kind of sinking in more and more. Um, and we said we were going to go to Diddley Squat Farm. It's, that was something that Farmer Cop and DJ Gohan wanted to do, and it wasn't open on the day they could do it. They were only in London uh, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Then they were flying up to Scotland to spend some time with Farm Sim Guy um, on Thursday. And obviously we were all flying back from Germany on the Monday, pretty much on the Monday. So Tuesday they did sightseeing and stuff, so Wednesday we were going to go to Diddley Squat Farm. Then found out the farm shop's not open on that day. Um, and again, massive shout out to Martin Rabel at Giants and Kermit, who had reached out to um, Caleb's manager. Just say, look, these YouTubers are going to be around, they're going to be coming up to Diddley Squat Farm. Is there any chance? They could meet him and he came back and said absolutely no problem at all just let me know when you're there i'll come up from the farm and we'll you know we'll have a chat so um oh by the way i'm selling this <laughs> sorry i'm just kind of i don't know i'm, I'm buzzing off, off, off of all this and everyone was saying you know do you miss playing farm sim when you're away and i said i do it it's weird to start off with sometimes having a day's break or a couple of days break is quite nice you kind of and your, your ideas start churning and then weirdly I find as, as time passes, especially when you're in a, a farming environment, we were at Deutzfahr in Lohingen in Germany, we got the train from Munich airport across the countryside out towards Lohingen, it's changed trains two times, three times, but through the countryside seeing all the equipment and machinery that you get in game, like base game um, tractors and trailers and all, and you know, that's amazing, you know, it's, this is all, it's being used, log piles and houses and buildings and it, it feels like a map then you start thinking I want to get back and play it's, it's funny how that happens so yeah it's kind of all I'm remembering conversations and bits of conversations and things that happened and experiences we had but Caleb came up to the farm to meet us and it turned out the farm shop was open we got there on the day they've started open on Wednesdays just recently and it wasn't as busy as I thought it was going to be but it was amazing standing there and seeing all the stuff if you haven't seen the series watch it even if you're not if you're not a big fan, fan of Jeremy Clarkson 
The series is stands up on its own right, its own merit, and I have to say, for me, Caleb Cooper is the star of that show, without any shadow of a doubt. Um, runs his own contracting company. Anyway, so he comes up, gets out of his little his, his little his pickup truck, comes over to us, shakes our hands, and says, oh, "We'll go and find a table. They've got a little cafe there. We'll go, go and get a table, we'll sit down, and have a chat." So we thought it was just going to be he'd come up, shake our hands, say hello, you know, nice to meet you. What do you do? And then go. So when I sat down and. He, he makes cider that they sell at the shop. So, so I'll, I'll, I'll get you guys a drink. Um, what do you want? And we said, oh, no, we should get you a drink. No, no, I'll get it. He said, off he went and came back. He sat with us for nearly three hours just chatting about farming, about farming. He plays farming simulators, played it for a long time. Him and his brother have played, him and his friends play. Um, he chatted about ideas he's got for things he wants to do, ideas he's got for the farm, ideas he's got for farming simulator. Um, the man was just like us just you know you see that thing oh you know they're celebrities now but he's just a bloke a bloke that does what he does um so yeah it's all kind of i don't know it's amazing it just gives you a real buzz but a buzz for just farming not sensational stuff not over the top stuff just for getting in a tractor and doing some work you know an honest day's work that's what i'm looking at so this we're getting rid of this we're getting rid of we're getting rid of this because it's thirsty. I love it. I love the sound of it. I love the look of it. I love the animations on it. I think it's a phenomenal tractor. Um, 290 horsepower. It doesn't have a front three point link, but with the equipment I'm using, that's not too bad. But just the, the fuel I'm getting through is bonkers. So I'm going to swap it out. And this one, because we've started getting, we've got the Deutz file, we've now got the Rossell Mash, which is almost kind of a replacement for that, really. Um, I thought, you know what? Let's sell two. We'll buy one. To replace i've still got another tractor i could get rid of if i wanted to i've got a couple actually i could get rid of but um we're going to get 26,674 for that this will go towards um the next tractor i have got that's the other thing i need to talk about as well i have got um some more contracts have come up the large bailing contract 48783 that's a big chunk towards it actually i like that so let's do that so you might have noticed the um hours on the machinery have all reset that's because carpathian countryside had an update for the update to take effect it needed a new save game so for most changes a new save game start may be required so i had to do a new save game and i had to reset everything how it was took a little while but again i didn't mind because i got back and it's like you know what i get to do a bit of farming i get to set things up move vehicles around you know so as far as i can tell financially and where i was i had done a couple of contracts off screen between the last episode and this one i was up to about two hundred and seven thousand. i've got two fertilizing contracts and that big bailing contract on field 17 the contract system seems to have reset itself. What I've also done, I skipped through two years because I wanted it so the machinery that I purchased had a couple of years on it. Although the hours aren't on the machinery, the time frame should have passed pretty much the same. The two fields that I own out here, if we go to, there we go, uh, crop types. The two fields we own, four and six. We've got a corn back in there. We've got a wheat back in there. We should be at the same growth cycle. I planted them at the same time. Um, that one had been weeded. This one hasn't had any weeds grow in it yet because I only planted that. Was it in the last episode? So we're waiting on weeds on that. So I thought what we'll do, we'll get some, we'll get the new tractor. I'm going to go and do a fertilising contract. I've got one on field nine. Remember our, our old field that we didn't have? It's a big field. Um, I've got my sprayer. I might use a new tractor, actually. Why not? And I've got a couple of others. One down there on... Oh, 17's the um, bailing contract. And then... Where was the other one? I thought it was a fairly small field. Oh, 39, there we go. All the way down there. So I've got a little bit to do. Um, but I've also made a decision. This plot of land here, where we did the forestry, we've forested two-thirds of it. That third hasn't been done yet. Some stuff has changed, actually part of the update up here at the sawmill as well, I think, which you might have to go and, There's chip wood board products in a sawmill now, I think it said. Um, so you might have to go and check that out, although I can't afford to really buy the sawmill. I'm not sure hmm, what to do on that one. So yeah, we've got some stuff to do. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and buy the, um, the tractor I want. And I'll show you it in a moment. It's all very exciting. 
So, 119 grand. Did you notice? I've, there's, there's new sound effects I've noticed as well. I was just kind of thinking, I thought it was at my house. I thought, is that, is that a police car? We've got ourselves a fence. An older fence. We've got a Vario. The 926. 119 grand, 285 horsepower. So that's only five horsepower less than the um, Kiravets we just sold. A little bit more expensive, but front three-point link, uh, it will go a little bit faster. So it's a kind of like for, I say like for like swap, I mean, I suppose technically it's a like for like swap. So I've sold two tractors, bought one, um, but it just I'm just trying to make our fleet, yeah, 32 miles an hour. A bit more kind of streamlined and effective, I think. But what we're also going to do... Oh, I like the sound of that. I like the sound of that. We're going to whiz down to the town because part of the other update, if you're playing on Carpathian and you've thought about it, or there might be a reason why you're not playing on it, is the telegraph poles, electricity pylons and stuff that go across fields. So what part of the update has been, it's been to allow you to remove the collisions. They stay where they are, but if you are using you know, whatever equipment you're using across the field, you don't have to work around them if you don't want to. I'm going to leave the collisions on, um, because I like that as a, as a game. It's what you would do in real life, you know, of course you would. So we're going to head into Sterusi. Sterusi? Sorry, I'm saying that wrong. Time. Inside. Whoa. Very cool. Another thing I found out as well if, like me, you're a console gamer, so is Caleb. Caleb's a console guy, get in. <laughs> he plays on Xbox. Um, but uh, yeah. He's been a console gamer. He, he was like me. He was saying the whole PC thing baffles me, which you know I, I use for my, my PC. I learn what I need to to do what I need to. I've never been a PC guy. I'm not. Um, I'm not a computer whiz. I, I can't sort of just jump on a PC and do whatever I want to. It takes me a bit of time, but I get there. And that's not just because I'm an old bloke. That was the other thing that kind of came out of the weekend or the last week, spending time with all these guys. I'm the oldest. <laughs> well, I say by far, not really. I think farm sim guys are a couple of years younger than me. Virtual farmer is four years younger than me, but the others are all they're all young pups. But they're all doing amazing stuff. And it's, it's just incredible. And what I loved was there wasn't an ego. There was there was no nothing from anybody. There was no you know viewing figures, subscriber counts. That was just wasn't relevant. We just chatted about the game. We chatted about ideas. We shared ideas. We helped each other with different things. It was just an amazing. In a very negative world, generally speaking, that we live in, it was a really positive environment to be part of, you know, I, I love that. So we're in Starusi, we've got the town hall here, you can tell the town hall because it says it's got the EU flag and the, uh, oh, hang on, sorry people, and the Slovak flag, I get through there, that running one over, and it's got that information disc, so we go, so you come here to the town hall, to this disc here, it says, Disable low voltage electricity pole collisions in fields. So if you're wondering where you need to do that, or if you can't even do that, you can now. So if you find them a pain and you don't want to use them, you can always come here. It's kind of a little bit like a map tour now, isn't it? Um, but I was just interested because of, you know, the fact it has been updated, what the update has entailed. There's a load of other stuff. Um, more reasonable prices at the livestock market for buying products. Um, there's a chip board, chip board board thing I want to look at. Improvements in tuning to the sawmill and carpentry. Carpentry also now produces uh, wood chips as a byproduct. Um, pig food maker has been adjusted. Oh, product storage capacities as well. You know my bale storage? Oh, that was the one thing. The funny story. You know, I always have one. That funny story moment. Um, <laughs> when I um, reset everything, I, I thought, okay, these, what I normally do is I'll get my pad and I'll write down everything. Everything I've got, everything I've done, all my figures, all the amounts, all the stuff I've got in storage, all the 
um, grain store, you know, whatever I've got stored everywhere. So when I reset everything, I just reset it as, as accurate as I can. Some might be out by a hundred litres here and there, just fractionally. Um, so I did it all, I took screenshots of everything. So on my PC to my right, I had all my screenshots up so I could try and match stuff up as much as possible. Some of the machinery, some of the names may have changed to protect the innocent. Um, some of the colours of, of trailers and stuff might be slightly different. But as far as I can tell, everything's pretty much the same. My potato and sugar beet I've got left, as far as I can tell, is pretty much spot on. And then what did I go and forget to do? I forgot to take a screenshot or write down how many bales I had. <laughs> oh, that was fun. So uh, what I did was I went into um, the last episode to have a look to see. And so what I did was find an episode where I um, had put bales in and check the bale numbers. I think I was on 495. I don't know what I did putting them in. And weirdly, I've had this happen. I had one set of bales with a blue wrap, some with green, some with white. So I tried to match up as much as possible. Well, when I put them in, they did this. I've got 501, so I've miscalculated somewhere. Um, so it's not exactly how it was, but I think it's as close as close as I could make it. So the bales are all here now, whereas before they were all over here. And you might also notice, it now says 2,000. This had a bale capacity of 1,000. It's now saying 2,000. So, uh, but I'm still going to, because I've got 500 bales, what I'm still going to do is, um, some bale. that baling contract I do for silage bales, I'm still going to sell them all, because I'd rather the money come up and we've got money to do stuff. I'm going to use this for doing that fertising contract I think so what we'll do is I'm, there might be a little bit left in this 466 like I said I tried to match stuff up as much as I could there might be a few colour shifts here and there but yeah. it is what it is so again apologies if I'm chatting a lot I know you know it's, it's one of those weird things that when you're whatever you're doing you know if you haven't seen someone for a while, if you haven't been around people for a while, you know, when I see my brother, we have so much to talk about. And if you're seeing the same person day in, day out, you get to a point, so, you know, unless something new or exciting happens, it just becomes sort of everyday chit-chat. I suppose because I haven't made a video, a Let's Play video, for a week, of all this stuff I want to talk about. What I do need to do, I know I've been buying my liquid fertilizer, I need uh, maybe to produce my own, not that it's overly expensive, but I just think it would be a better idea if I did. I like this tractor, I like the sound of it. This has been um, provided by the uh, Bayern Agra distributor. No, the other thing I'm going to do, if I'm spraying a field that belongs to somebody else, go back to that, do that. Again, if you haven't watched this before, deactivate automatic application rate. I don't want to put that on. And then I want to put my application rate as low as possible. It's on 12 already, so 12 litres per hectare, rather than on automatic where it will adjust. But I mean, to be fair, it, it shouldn't do, because the field I'm doing is a contract field. It hasn't had... Um, precision farming mapping done on it so there wouldn't really be anything for it to pick up but there's always a risk that it'll put on it could go the other way and put 220 you know um, there we go so this field just here so while I've been doing all of this while I was setting all this stuff up there was something I thought about that wooded area where I cleared all the trees I was thinking about what I could use it for. So then I was thinking, I've done two maps now. Fooling and Griffin, Indiana, where I put in olive trees. The ones where you use the shaker to get the olives off. And um, never got to a point where they're ready to harvest. I'm gonna do olives. I'm gonna do olive trees. And I absolutely 100% promise we are going to get to harvest them. I, I've been wanting to use that for absolutely ages. I'm loving this. I'm probably going to put some more in. But to be fair, this pays out 30, is it 34 grand. 
So even if I have to spend four, another four grand on liquid fertilizer, I'm still gonna make a profit on the contract. Um, I'll do the other fertilizer. When the Bailey one, I'll leave, I'll do that. Again, I'll probably do it off camera. Um, what I did the last time I did that, oh, I did those screenshots. I think I deleted them. When I did the last, because I'm, I'm out of sync with everything, I had a load of screenshots sat, and I, when I came to start editing videos together, I said, I'm, I'm not sure why I've got those there, and I deleted them. But, with the silage baling on field 17, the contract pays 40 something grand. Now, I've, I've just taken the contract without machinery. I've had this conversation before. So what I'll do, I will, um, i to turn it off now. I will lease machinery to do the baling contract um, to speed up the process a little bit. Um, using the ultimate baling pack and so you can hook things together and that kind of thing and a few people said they wanted to see it some people said it but it doesn't really fit what you're doing on here and it you know it doesn't really it's you know I'm, I'm more on this one about just doing the farming you know I have bought some bigger machinery but that's just the evolution of the farm am I gonna go crazy big am I gonna you know no Am I going to end up going up into six, seven, eight hundred horsepower tractors? Probably not. You never know. Never say never, but I don't think so. So then what I did when I sold the silage bales, the same as when I did the hay baling contract on Field 17, unless I was keeping the spare bales myself, if I sold the spare bales, I would then take off of that the money I used to lease the equipment. Or say take it off. I'd already leased the equipment, so it kind of covered the leasing cost of the equipment. It was 20 odd grand, 25 grand, I think, to lease all the equipment. So it's cheaper to borrow their equipment for a bailing contract. Am I making sense? I'm, I'm getting the feeling I'm talking utter nonsense at the moment. Um, if we go to here and we should be able to have a bailing contract, uh, there we go. So, for example, all the equipment you got there your tractor, your mower, your tedder, your windrower, your baler, the bale um, grabs for picking up the bales for transportation, that kind of thing. That'll be a slightly different set of equipment. That one. You've got the bigger Krona M for doing that, which is fine. Larger baler, auto load, auto stack, trailer, that kind of thing. If you use the ultimate baling pack, you can have a tractor pulling or having a mower set up on it that windrows at the same time. You can have um, either a baler directly behind that, so you can do it all in one pass. So you can windrow and bale if you're doing grass bales. If you're doing hay bales, you can do the mower with a tether behind. Um, I think, can you attach a trailer uh, um, baler behind that? I'm not sure. But all I was doing was mowing and tedding at the same time, then baling separately. If you're just doing silage bales, then you can just run the mower with the with a baler wrapper behind it. So all in one pass, you're getting it done, and you don't need to use all of that equipment. So whilst it is cheaper, to lease their equipment on there is only 693. So you've got 693 versus potentially 20 grand, 25 grand, once you get into borrowing a tractor and stuff as well. But that's why I've just tried to go for slightly higher horsepower tractors as well, for me. So I can use my tractor, but then lease balers. That brings the, the overall cost down. Um, but because of what, you can do it faster, so you can get that done easier in one, one sweep, I guess. And then when you sell the bales, you make that money, that leasing money back anyway. So it's, it's how you, however you want to tackle it. You know, when I did Griffin, Indiana, I, I borrowed equipment all the time. I didn't lease anything. Um, the ultimate bailing pack wasn't a thing then either. But you, I mean, there's still ways you could have done it to sped it up, sped it up, to speed it up, to sped things up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is, well, when I've got the fertilising jobs done, we will go into May to see whether we get weeds on our cornfield because I want to get the weeding done. That way I know I'm done. Both those fields um, have been... What's the word? There are some words. For a person who hasn't stopped talking for the last 20 minutes, there are some words. Seeded. Yes, they've been lined. Seeded. They've been nitrogened fertilized and they've been rolled so weeding is the last thing left to do and then they can be left to grow then and we can get around to harvest season we get to use our new harvesters which i haven't used yet either so i will see you in a little while once this is done we are getting through a fair bit on here even in the lowest setting but it's all good I suddenly remembered while I was doing all that. I've got a worker doing that now. We'll run out of fertilizer at some point. We've got sugar down here at the sugar mill. 
Uh, we haven't got much left in here actually. We're down to 33,944. Yeah, left in here. When this runs out, that'll be this run out. I'm not saying I won't bring anything back here to do sugar. We had a sugar contract um, to provide sugar for the local area. We have got a bit stacked up here as well. I put exactly the same amount in here that was in previously. Um, and then when I skipped ahead to get to where I was, I forgot to turn it off. That's why I've got so much sat here. So I should really be at a point now. I think I had 60,000 litres in there, which should now be chugging. Um, but that 60,000 litres chugged down to 30,000 litres. Yeah, that was my mistake. But it's, you know, I've got the same amount of sugar out of it that I would have had. So that's not... I had some sat here already that needs to be taken and sold. So what we're going to do now is take this to sell it. And... Uh, could be using the forks actually but for some reason it might it's, it's got to be the liftable little pallets little bales it's got to be liftable pallets but anyway so i'm going to take these they'll put a bit more money back in the bank as well even if that just pays for a bit of fertilizer plus i don't oh it's done it again i need to straighten this out that one's fine go to that one do that there we go that's better I think it was Tiago Tiago messaged me you know I had I did this before I was driving onto the silage clamp and my rear trailer was it was going crab white or was it a front trailer? I couldn't I couldn't get to straighten out. Tiago message, I think it was Tiago. A positive if it wasn't, it might be it might be Michael. I'm so sorry, it's been such a long time since I had the message left. Um that because I had the trailers curled round in a tight curl, when I put the straps on, the strap from one trailer was strapping onto the pallets from the next trailer behind. So when you tried to straighten out, the straps weren't allowing you to. That's why. So we'll take this sugar beet cut we can take to the biogas plant and then the sugar beet i think i'm going to take i didn't did I sell anything at my I, we put in a sell everything um container this can go to the transport company animal dealer bakery we've taken it to already bakery was difficult to get in and out of and the dairy as well the dairy was a bit easier to get in and out of but i'm gonna take this up probably to sell everything So I'll drop off the uh, sugar beet cut on the way.
Okay, the worker be working. So what I'm going to do now is head over to the woodland. Well, it's not really woodland anymore. It's partial woodland. But what has suddenly dawned on me? I didn't think this through, did I? Um, unlike before, when I got the permit for the woodland, did the logging, and then the permit went back. If I'm going to put olives on this, I've got to buy the land, don't I? It's not going to leave me very much money, is it? I can't remember how much it was. Anyway, well, when we go over there, it's 100, almost 125? It was 155. Mm. We'll see when we get there. So, yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'll get the olive groves in, we'll get them in now. Um, no, I can't remember, because there's so many. There was a modded olive. Olives? No, by Omatana. Then there was the one I'm going to use, which is Rowley Christie one. No, I can't remember if that goes in individually. No, it doesn't. On Griffin, doesn't it go in like normal grape vines and olive vines? They are trees, but you put them in and track them. I think it is. I think it is. So we have to buy the plot. Now obviously because of what I had to do, because I cut all the trees down when I did my logging here and they're all the stumps that need to be grinding, because the map was then updated, to get it back to look how it was now, I removed the trees with a with um, a mulcher rather than come in and do all the logging again and re you know, redo it. So I removed the trees so it was back to how it was. So the stumps are already gone. So technically I've done the stump grinding. Um, that was kind of done, let's say off camera so our plot here we're, we're back to where we were we, we had cleared all the way down to here up to pretty much level with the sawmill so there's the top third of this to be done so this plot here oh it's filled 55 123,000 okay which leaves us 79,800 I need more contracts <laughs> don't worry that'll go up a little bit we'll be fine we'll be okay so then we need to go into production, orchards, there we go, olives and olive picker. Olive groves are partly rose, need to be cultivated, fertilised and mulched. So, how many do I put in? If I start from here. That. First row in. So I like the fact, and this wasn't necessarily intentional. Oh, I was going to say I like the fact I'm, I'm managing to do it. All oh, right, so it was right to there. Okay, that's all right. Yeah, we're, we're doing it in between the other trees. That being said, I'm just thinking for spraying and stuff and mulching, they're going to be in the way, aren't they? So I might have to remove a couple of those. I might be able to get down between them. We'll see. Let's take another one here. What am I already colliding with? Oh, hang on, we had a little. Right, so I'm going to get some more done. Let's get a tree in, a uh, tree out. I mean, we are, even if I do take the trees down, we're putting more trees in, so it's not like we're leaving it a desolate wasteland. This one here. Hopefully the stump won't cause a problem. It might do, so I might have to grind the stump out. I've just remembered. Oh man, I had some lumber left, didn't I? 
because the sawmill hadn't got through all the lumber, there was a pile of lumber at the sell point ready to go. Oh, it doesn't matter. It's, we'll, we'll take that as a, a casualty of the update. Do I need to remove that one? Probably. And I, at this point, don't care what else happens on this Let's Play. I am going to get to a point where I can harvest these. <laughs> I want to harvest these. Right, let's try this again, shall we? Oh, I'm in the way. That's probably what it is. Right, I'll put some more in. And then we'll have to get up here. We'll have to leech. Le leech, leech. I'll leech a little mulcher. Actually, I'll probably need to plough first, don't I? Plough either side of them. We'll do the ploughing first. Yeah, it says needs ploughing. Uh, we'll plough and then we'll get some spray on them. I'm probably going to have to lease. Thinking about it. I've just realised my mic wasn't on. What was it picking up? Sorry. I suppose. One of those. Precision sprayer pack. That's going to cost a little bit more though, isn't it? Same price. Hmm, okay. Oh, it's not too expensive at all. Contract's done for fertilising. 477 litres left in the tank. I'm going to put this away. I've still got my beacons on them in my own yard. What we'll do is pop that to the side there. There's no reason at all why I'm using the, the fence, only because it's new. <laughs> I just want to use it, I like the sound of it. Um, I went to the store and picked up, I didn't buy, I leased. Um, let's look up to that. The Dondi Disco Vitis. That was 600 to lease. Two metre wide plough. And then this, you saw me looking at precision. Now, actually, it doesn't matter. It's got the precision farming option, precision spraying option on it. Because, unless I, again, unless I'm doing something really wrong, I'm on the precision farming screen. And normally, you click onto your whatever field you own. And um, you can then order your soil samples. But on the forestry land, if I go to there, you can see we own it. Um, if I go down to that, I can't click on it. I can't get um, any soil data from it. So I'm assuming I'll just have to do this as normal. Just plough it, spray it. Do I need to lime it though still? Potentially you'd still need to lime it just to give it the best chance possible. There's no grass really around it, it's all the woodland. So I was just thinking about mulching, whether I need to mulch it. I don't think so, because I'm going to plough first. So I'll get this over there, I'm going to get the ploughing done, get some spraying done, and that'll be our olive grove, our olive trees in. And that can all go along. So we've got our corn, we've got wheat, we've got olives which will be growing. 
I've still got 425,000 litres of sugar beet. Which I could be taking down and putting in for, for doing more sugar. I'm going to keep holding it for the time being. We've done sugar, we've done the load, we've delivered a load. I ran it. I'm just thinking, you know something I've never done? I've never sold a production chain. Not like when you can you know, buy a field and sell a field back. I've never sold a production chain. I know sometimes when you sell them, the buildings disappear. Sometimes you sell them and... You just get the money back from them. Yeah, that's not something I've ever done. Not something I've ever thought to really, because generally speaking, my production chains when I'm running them, I'm just I just run them and you know they keep going until you know the end of whatever we do on that particular farm. I've been asked what farm I'm ever, uh, what, what farm am I doing next? I haven't decided. Um, I have been looking at a few different options and at the moment I don't know. What we'll do is pull that to one side. that off. Go through the gap there. Swing that around, drop that off. So we find out whether I cut down enough trees, whether we're going to have obstacles. It's only doing around them, which is what we want, those little patches around. Although we still have grass there, so that's still going to be too many mulch, isn't it? So I thought the ploughing would deal with that, but it doesn't, does it? As we can see. Might be a real mulch as well. I've gone and grabbed my small tractor and I've grabbed myself a mini mulcher. You can't even see it off the back. I have grabbed the Eno Elite. I've got the Salak Amuel at 1000 on the back, which is only a one meter. I've got the Eno Elite 270 just over there because that actually spreads out further. I just wanted to give this one a try to see if it would work. It wasn't expensive to lease either of them. Um, and I thought I'd give you a bit of um, in cab Callaway. No? Now folks, here's a story about Minnie the Mulcher. See? In Cab Callaway. It works. <laughs> um, so I've got the smaller tractor. It still hits the cab. Um, but what we'll do, turn that on. This requires 12 horsepower, the MUL 1000. And the Eno Elite is 75. This has got 81 horsepower. So there we go. Oh, no, that's interesting. It's not. I have to wait for that grass to get longer before I come and mulch that. Oh well, I'm glad I um, just mulching the stuff in between, just not doing that yet, so we'll have to wait for that to grow and we'll come back and mulch that later on. 
Okay, well, like I'm glad they weren't expensive. They weren't expensive to this at all. Then one was 100 and something, 160, and another one was. I say 300, maybe? They weren't a lot. So, what we'll do then, I'll just go and spray and I'll just come back and mulch those later on once the grass grows a little bit. And the beauty between um, this and that, the Eno Elite, is the Eno Elite to get you away from the trees so you don't hit your cab on the branches. We can do that with it. So, you can mulch over towards the trees and your cab stays away from the trees. like that. That being said, I thought this we've got 81 horsepower and this should buy 75. I thought we'd have enough. It's it is struggling. That's a bit I may have got a bigger tractor here. I thought it would work. I thought it'd work better, let's just say that. I could landscape between all of this, I could put some grass in, maybe I could do that. I could plough between them, I could plant grass as well uh, on here. That way I'd have some more ground for cutting grass. So when I do baling contracts, if I'm, lease baling, if I'm leasing baling equipment rather than borrowing it, um, I can then bale my own ground as well, so I could grass between them with this. That's not a bad idea, you know. Yeah, that's a problem. Okay. I'll put another tractor. Sometimes you can get away with the horsepower if, if there's not much between them. Sometimes you get away with it. Sometimes you can get away with using higher horsepower required equipment with a lower horsepower vehicle. That one, sometimes it'll just come up saying you don't have enough horsepower and then that's it, game over. But those have to go back, I have to bring them back out again. Right then, let's spray. So I'm going to check. Go to here, and we'll go. Where are we? Ah. Oh. oh no, it's mulched in between. I was to say, that's not saying mulched, is it? Growing. Hmm, this is an interesting one then, because I can't get soil sampling on this patch of land, even though I own it, but with precision farming on, I'm not getting any data at all from that. If I go back up to here, I've got my crop type, so olives in the ground, it shows it's growing, if we go to soil composition, couple of bits I missed with the plowing but that's okay but I'm I won't get any information Turn the off again. hot spots crop type so I can't get any I'm just assuming that what I'm putting down is actually making a difference how do I go about that's hmm I can't so I click on that now, that comes up with that, and then it says purchase soil information, which I've already done. If I buy a plot of land, it will allow me to do that. Again, this is not something I've encountered before, because I've only ever put them on fields. Um, unless it involves ploughing the whole lot out to, to get to that. That's on that one, that's on that one. Can't get it on that one. I'll carry on spraying. I'll, I'll go through the motions. I'll spray it. Hopefully it'll make a difference. I'll mulch and do all the other stuff. I can but try. And it 
is taking some spray. So it must be doing something. With 4,000 litres there, it's probably too much. So I decided to do exactly what I said. I'm going to plough out around and between and I'm going to plant grass. Because the moment we've got forest floor, I could paint grass, but I'd rather have it so I can fertilise it and do whatever I need. I might take a couple more trees out. Actually, I'm going to have to be careful here because I left some stumps in the ground, didn't I? I'm going to catch stumps. So, is that going to overlay? It shouldn't be too bad. Hopefully, I've got the gap just right. Now, create fields. There we go. And I can do the rows going the other way as well. And then plant grass. Yeah. Good shout. That'll be a stump. Somewhere. Where do I hit it? There we go. That's got to be taken out. Still going, to mulch, still going to need to mulch the bits um, around the olive trees, but this makes sense. At least it does to me. <laughs> So what I'll probably do, uh, well next episode, we'll see what we'll do about mulching when that grows up. Um, we'll have herbiciding to do on our cornfield when the weeds come through. I've got that baling contract to do. It's a difficult one, I don't know, do people, because of the style, the way I'm doing the Let's Play, with sort of smaller machinery and, and doing it more, I say, I mean, realistic is a relative term, isn't it? I've said that before, I'm not doing a realism experiment, I'm not doing a full realistic all-in cab or anything like that, you know. Do people want to see me use that ultimate bailing and pack and lease some gear and do all in one hit? I'm not quite sure whether people would want to or not, but I don't know. So I'll go between all the trees here. Some of the grass is there anyway. Meadow grass, but we might as well utilise the ground if we own it now. Oh, not the stump. Yeah, if we own the ground now, why not? It makes sense to use it. I could plant a crop around all this if I wanted to. I mean, I know technically grass is a crop because we're going to be using it for something, but I could, if I wanted to, plant a crop and just have the olive trees in amongst the crop if I wanted. I mean, it'd be a bit of a weird way around doing it. And I'd have to get smaller headers for harvesting, but it could be done utilising the ground maximum 
efficiency. Anyway, that's the end of this episode. I hope you've enjoyed it. We're back. The update's done. It's all sorted. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.